Venus in the third house. So here we are in the house of Mercury, the house of communication, exchange and words and knowledge. So having Venus in this house means that probably, you know, you are a person who is very focused on gathering new information, very curious, you know, with a very agile, fast mind and tongue. So people with Venus in this house, they usually value these qualities very much, like verbal expression, communication, intelligence, and possess them as well. So you will find them being very social, like social butterflies, you know, they have, you know, a share in every friend circle, you know, they're just everywhere, they visit all kinds of events, you know, literature event, literature events, poetry, journalism, conferences, everything that gives them the feeling that they are learning something new. And also, they also connect very quickly with a lot of people because that is also something that excites them because they gather new information, you know. Um, so you will see them being very active, very fast, um, very spread around, but you probably will not see them like focused on one thing. So they might have like one foot in, every possible you know social um group but they don't really you know fixate on one thing in any area so accordingly you will, will rarely see them with one partner they will have a lot of friends and they tend to keep the relationship platonic for quite a while because they realize and they know that they are really quickly intrigued by people because they're so curious so they actually really love people and it's easy for them to get into touch with other people like over small talk or over basically any topic because these guys usually have so many um in for so much information so many things to share about all kinds of various topics that they make really interesting you know um conversation partners and they are usually very eloquent they know how to express themselves well and they're just fun to have around so they usually have you know a lot of friends and they take a long time in order to make the next step in a you know romantic relationship hence at first sight they are attracted to a lot of people you know let's just say this is like a very versatile um, and open-minded venus position however this interest is like this first interest doesn't go very deep it's just like a curiosity but it might appear to other people that they are romantically interested in you whereas they're just really very invigorated by the information exchange that's happening between the two of you so they usually tend to entertain a large number of loose connections until they finally realize that somebody is worth their investment and can give them this excitement and this feeling that they're constantly learning something new for a long or extended period of time. What excites them about entering relationships with other people is to receive some exciting mental input. And that might somehow appear like, you know, it's not like related to sexuality at all, but you know, for them it is. So oftentimes they not only look a little androgynous and maybe even nerdy, but they also might appear asexual because they are very engaging in conversation and in interaction, but it always remains on a platonic level. They are never very direct with um, like saying that they are attracted to you or displaying their attraction on a sexual or physical level. They will always just keep entertaining this mental level of connection. And if you want to like get this connection to another level, I uh, so to say to the physical, you do need to make the first step because they will always remain on the mental level of connection. They are not very good with you know getting into their bodies and expressing their physical needs. Um, so even though they might appear asexual or not interested in sex, it's absolutely not the truth. It is just that, you know, their sexuality works in a little bit of a different way. They only get sexually interested in somebody when the mental connection is very strong and very invigorating and very exciting for them. So this is when they start even considering, you know, you as a sexual um, partner or as a sexual um, mate. 
So if you want to keep those guys for a long term, you will need a strategy. Because like I said, they connect quickly to people and they are usually always perceived as flirty and they feel attraction to a lot of different people, but the attraction is more, you know, on a mental level. And they get very flirty very quickly, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean they want to sleep with you. It doesn't mean they want a relationship with you. It doesn't mean anything with those kind of folks, right? So you need to play it cool here. What will get them for sure is intellectual dominance. Like you need to outsmart them and to make them feel stupid. A little bit, you know, because they have a fair share of intellectual arrogance. You know, they know that they are eloquent. They know that they are, you know, very social and that they know a lot and that they are very, you know, witty and fun to be around. So if you make them feel like you are an endless source of information, that you are always smarter than them, this is something that will hook them, right? Because they always want to learn. They always want to gather, you know, new insights and new experiences. So the strategy I propose is, you know, when you meet them, get into a really interesting conversation with them. You know, try to find out what their interests are and, you know, get into a really intellectually stimulating exchange with them. And leave it at that, you know? You know, there's gonna be some flirting, there's gonna be everything, but don't make a next move. So, but get their number. And, you know, in order to send them more information on the topic you just talked about. And when you start texting with them, you know, make sure you send them interesting stuff and make sure that your response is always longer than theirs. If there's one thing that will get them off, it's super long, verbally articulate messages, right? So if, you know, in this writing phase, you do everything right, you win. This is where they decide if they want to sleep with you or not, when they see how you write and how you express yourself. Um, Always make sure that you are never super direct and, you know, vulgar or making any sexual comments. Drop metaphors or hints, you know, be a little more sophisticated. Use complicated words that they actually have to Google because they don't know what they mean. This is things that they will love. So with this, guys, you gotta keep your confidence. You can't just lose your stance or get insecure because they don't jump into bed with you straight away. You just have to see that they are much more into the mental kind of connection than into the physical. It actually doesn't mean that much to them, the physical connection. Which doesn't mean, again, that they are asexual, that they, you know, are not that fiery in bed. They're probably very creative in bed because they are so curious and open-minded that probably you can do anything with them. But you gotta get them there. And for that, they just need to feel that you're intellectually superior or at least at one level that you have, you know, some really interesting um, connection going on on the intellectual level. Um, However, you know, if you can't keep that up, if, you know, you just want to win them over for the sake of it and then, you know, move on, I don't know if it's really worth it because with these guys, you could, it's, it's hard to fake, you know, that you got something going on because they are very smart and they um, will just probably see through you if you're only trying to win them over by pretending to smart talk. So if there's not really like a strong mental connection, you don't have similar interests or anything, you know, maybe just drop them altogether because, um, yeah, this is what is most important to them. And you are not gonna be able to keep them at all if there is not a strong mental connection. So if you feel like you got really some honest, you know, connection with them, similar interests and stuff you can talk about, then it's worth the shot. Otherwise, I would say, you know, you're probably not gonna make it because, you know, if, if, you, if you don't have a personal connection with them, then it's gonna be very hard to win them over. A good thing with them is that stuff is not taken seriously, you know, so you can go into a romantic, go into a sexual connection and go back to a friendship connection. Like, they are very fluid and adaptable and are not very dramatic in general, so they're always open for all kinds of connections. But it needs to start with an honest, existing mental bond. So that's my interpretation of Venus in the Third House and let me know what you think of it. Looking forward to hearing from all of you Venus in the third house people.